Hey, get off your phone. Stop looking at your phone. You just clicked play, so now you don't need to touch your phone anymore. Put it in the center console. Put it down in the cup holder. Put your phone down. No more looking at your phone while you're driving. Okay, now that that's covered, today we watch Season 1, Episode 10 of Game of Thrones, Fire and Blood. Thanks for listening to Board While Driving, and please go to www.boardwalldriving.com for links to all of the places where you can find our podcast, including Apple, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, all of those places. Uh, go to the website, and you'll be able to get the link to uh, get back here. Uh, so thanks for that, and thanks for listening. Uh, Okay, so uh, this episode was directed by Alan Taylor and written by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, of course, um, Fire and Blood, and uh, the description reads, uh, as tragic news spreads across the Seven Kingdoms, Bran and Rickon share a prophetic dream. Catelyn interrogates Jaime about her son's fall and Rob's destiny is forever changed. Tyrion heads south, Arya assumes a new identity, and Sansa is terrorized by Joffrey. Well, duh. John must choose between the Night's Watch and his family, and Danny pays a terrible price for her love. Uh, that's pretty much it, so let's get right into it. And uh, I don't think I need to tell you, but uh, finally, the dragons are born. Two or three? Isn't it three? Yeah. Vision to go to bed to now. Oh, that was. Oh my God! Yeah, it's. <laughs> she's. Oh wow, she's so hot <laughs> in every way. Yeah, she's perfect. Yeah. What an episode, though, right? That might be the best episode of the entire series. No. I still it's think up there. It's number up there. six that was one of the best. Oh no, in this season, this one is definitely the best. I just forgot what six was though. But I was like, oh yeah, that one was good. But yeah, this one's good. I wish like more deaths though. I'm glad she killed that witch, dude. Oh, wait. Maybe I should say that. Because... We have a witch. There's witch books out there. Again? No. Maybe. Uh, Who knows? I want to go check. Yeah. Well, like, in all reality, maybe. Something like Sonic. Good. So that was season one? Yes. That uh, was the season one finale. Cool. That's probably the one of the most fucked up scenes though. Which one? It's like that's basically how it goes. Like Joffrey can just chop yeah. your head your dad's head off in front of you. And then the next day or week or so in court, when there's a musician who's trying out for your coronation feast that you're going to throw in like another day or two, uh, and sings a song of how you got your throne, and it doesn't paint you in a good light, you're just like, all right, your tongue in your hands. (laughs) And then... But it's funny that no one's like, he can't do that. That's a dick move. Yeah, well, this is... Anyone else think that? Maybe maybe we should not agree. Like, what? It, it shows you how unstable Cersei is. That she would rather put him, put her son, who's clearly unstable, 
clearly touched uh, in a position to be making those choices. And then he's just like, I'm done for the day. Like, I only wanted to come in here to murder, or basically maim. I just wanted to come in here and maim and torture. And, uh, oh, and then goes over and then... What does he do as soon as he's off? What's his first thing? Well, that show, he... show the girl. <laughs> it's like, look at him. Look, if you want to live, look at him. What the fuck? <laughs> that's so fucked up. Oh, and then that's the lady that was like, sort of your teacher or something. We don't know. The Septa, yeah. Yeah, like Septa Mordain. Like that person's head there too. It's like you want to see his body? I have his body. Actually, go. Let's bring his body out. Ooh, door number two. <laughs> 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 they make it to a pinata. <laughs> Kids are like eating it. And like, why? No. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> ah. And he's just like, ah. How else can I? Or, like, make you want to kill yourself. <laughs> That's exactly what he thinks. <laughs> He's so fucked up. How else? M- Mother says, I have to marry you, so I'm just going to make you kill yourself so I don't have to. in that scene is just more bad news for Sansa. <laughs> just every every word in that sentence is just Joffrey's being a continual dick and like proving that he he's like it's like oh he likes to, he basically likes to come in his work he likes to come in maim and torture a little bit then when he gets off the first thing he likes to do is spend his time basically tor- mentally torturing me trying to get me to kill myself by hurting all of my family members. And it's the worst existence. And, it's been and uh, yeah, basically, it's like, <laughs> by the way, I will be putting a child for you. I still have to marry you, but, uh... So now, look at this, the baby dance. Basically, that means you're my plaything because I'm the king, so, uh, here's, this is your dad. And I'm going to do this again to Like, that's the one. It's just crazy. It's like, It's upsetting that she doesn't grab him and she's like push him off the fucking ramper. Yeah, or like grab him and hug him and like go over. Yeah, but like yeah, do your duty, man.